you know, as a Jew, how does it feel that there are other religions that don't think you're getting into heaven? So let me ask you, what's the Catholic view on who gets into heaven and who doesn't? I feel like I lead a pretty good life. Am I basically screwed here? Sicuramente era fiero di tuo papà. Parla con tuo papà. In eternity, you're going to be with him or you're not going to be with him. Do we really believe that the gospel is our greatest need? Hey guys, this is going to be a heavy one for sure too. Make sure that you watch this video until the end because it's really power packed. First, uh, Ben Shapiro presses the Catholic Bishop, Bishop Barron, on this whole idea of heaven and hell. Uh, would anyone who doesn't accept Christ go to heaven or go to hell? And then later on in this video, make sure you watch and listen to what um, Frank Turek says around this whole idea of God being loving. You know, if he loves you enough, um, if you reject him, would he love you enough to let you into heaven? So stick around for all of these. Uh, I'm going to give my thought along the way, but let's go into this. So let's start okay. with the most awkward of the awkward questions. Yeah. I don't really care about this question particularly much, but I get this question a lot, which is, you know, as a Jew, how does it feel that there are other religions that don't think you're getting into heaven? So let me ask you, what's the Catholic view on who gets into heaven and who doesn't? I feel like I lead a pretty good life, a very religiously based life in which I try to keep not just the Ten Commandments, but a solid 603 other commandments as well. And I spend an awful lot of my time promulgating what I would consider to be Judeo-Christian virtues, particularly in Western societies. So what's the Catholic view of me? Am I basically screwed here? No. The Catholic view, go back to uh, the Second Vatican Council, says it very clearly. I mean, Christ is the privileged route to salvation. I mean, God so loved the world, he gave his only son that we might find eternal life. So that's the, the privileged route. However, Vatican II clearly teaches that someone outside the explicit Christian faith can be saved. Now, they're saved through the grace of Christ, indirectly received. So, I mean, the grace is coming from Christ, but it might be received according to your uh, conscience. So if you're following your conscience sincerely, or in your case, you're following the commandments of the law sincerely, yeah, you can be saved. Now, that doesn't conduce to a complete relativism. I, we still would say the privileged route and, and the, the route that God has, has offered to humanity is, is the route of his son. But no, you can be saved. Uh, even Vatican II says that an atheist of goodwill can be saved because in following his conscience, if he does, John Henry Newman said the conscience is the aboriginal vicar of Christ in the soul. It's very interesting characterization, that it is, in fact, the voice of Christ. If he's the Logos made flesh, right, he's the divine mind or reason made flesh, that when I follow my conscience, I'm following him, whether I know it explicitly or not. So even the atheist, Vatican II teaches, of goodwill can be saved. So is Catholicism act-based or faith-based? Because this has been sort of the traditional distinction between Judaism, for example, and Christianity, yeah. is Judaism is a very act-based religion where it's all about what you do in this life and that earns you points in heaven. Uh, and then there's the faith-based religions that are more based on you believe in the truth, the way, and the life, and now you're in. Where, where does Catholicism actually stand, or is that division too star? No, I, I would say it's love-based. Uh, God is love. God so loved the world, he sent his only son. We're being drawn into the divine love. Now, do we have to accept that love as an act of, of faith? Of course, right? So, so God makes this great offer in Christ. Is it accepted in faith? Yeah. Aquinas says faith is the, is the door of the spiritual life. Without faith, you can't get into the spiritual life. That means a trust in the divine love. Now, having made that great fundamental act, are you now called upon to be fully engaged, mind, will, passion, body, everything, in response to that love, a love awakening love in you? Yes. So we use the language of cooperation with grace, and that grace comes first accepted in faith. Luther was right to that extent. If Luther had said, grazia prima, we'd be fine. Grace first. Notice how Bishop Robert Barron uh, answered uh, Ben Shapiro's question. He wasn't based on the scripture, but really based on the Vatican too. Well, first is, what does the Bible say? We're going to get to that a, a, a little bit down the road, but you can see when uh, Ben Shapiro was asked, am I screwed here? Uh, he says, no, well, um, because I mean, I live pretty good life. I keep the law. But first, I no one, Bible makes it clear that no one really keeps the law 100%. Actually, as a matter of fact, if you if you break one, you break all because the law is perfect. The God is one who gives the law. It is whole. It doesn't mean that we just go around and sin, but if, if I'm going to base my my eternity, my uh, my salvation on keeping the law, I am doomed because all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. That is what the scripture says and not uh, necessarily what the, um, the Vatican or whatever uh, the Vatican says. A baron, is a, he, he's a smart guy, but unfortunately, I disagree with him on this because what he said goes totally against the Bible. 
we'll come back to the statement of atheists of goodwill, uh, whether they will go to heaven or not, because that was one of the things that he mentioned in the video, that an atheist of goodwill can be saved and go to heaven. But listen to what uh, Pope Francis says, how he responded to this boy's question, who really uh, was desperate to understand the state of his father's soul, uh, who uh, passed away, um, uh, obviously being an atheist. But listen to what he says, and then I'm going to come back and, sh and we'll play a clip of uh, Frank Turek, what he said, and then we'll compare all of this uh, against the Bible and see where we stand. And then you make your decision, see who exactly is speaking the truth and who is not. Poco tempo fa è mancato, viene a, 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 è venuto a mancare mio papà. E lui era ateo, ma ci ha fatto battesare a tutti e quattro figli. E era un uomo bravo. E in cielo, papà? Che bello che un figlio dica del suo papà era bravo. Voi pensate che Dio sarebbe capace di lasciarlo lontano da te? Pensate quello? Ma forte, con coraggio. Dio abbandona i suoi figli? Dio abbandona i suoi figli quando sono bravi? Ecco, Emanuele, questa è la risposta. Dio sicuramente era fiero del tuo papà, perché è più facile, essendo credente, battesare i figli che essendo non credente, battesare. E sicuramente a Dio questo è piaciuto tanto. Parla con tuo papà. Well, first, to really respond to this boy, I think it requires the wisdom of God and really the understanding of the Holy Spirit. Uh, but giving someone false hope is never a good thing. Uh, I would rather focus on really uh, seizing the opportunity to share the gospel, but also consoling this boy who's, who lost his father. Uh, but God, at the end of the day, God is the ultimate judge. Who judges? I don't know. Uh, 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 on his deathbed or whatever, whether he made a profession of faith, we don't know that. So we leave the ultimate judgment to God. But at the same time, when the Pope Francis, you cannot notice what he says. Well, first, because he baptized his children in the church, that means he has some kind of good conscience. But unfortunately, Pope Francis' response to this boy is totally unbiblical. God makes it clear. For example, in John 14, right? Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. No one goes to the Father except through Him. There is no other way by which we must be saved except through Jesus. So, Jesus is the path for salvation. For God so loved the world that He gave His Son, that whosoever believes in Him will perish but will not, will not have eternal, will, have, will not perish but have everlasting life. That is the gospel. Every opportunity we have, we seize it to share the gospel, but not give people false hope because some might believe this. Down the road, think that they are good deeds and uh, just getting so when baptized is enough to get into heaven. We don't want to, we definitely we don't want to give people false hope. But listen to what Frank Turek said uh, in reference to uh, this whole idea of maybe someone being an atheist, would they go to heaven? God as a loving God, if I rejected God here on earth, would he be loving enough to not honor my will of not wanting to spend eternity with him? There's only two possibilities if God exists. In eternity, you're going to be with him or you're not going to be with him. Right? That's logically the only two options. If you want to be with him, you will seek him out and be with him. If you don't want to be with him, God will not force you into his presence against your will. In fact, let me make the objection stronger than what you're making it. You're very polite, but I debated an atheist who was a little bit more direct. And, and let me uh, tell you, this man was a, he's a good man. I like him. His name is Eddie Tabash. He's an attorney from Beverly Hills. We debated at the University of Michigan a number of months ago. And he looked at me during the Q&A and he said, Frank, my mother was a survivor of the Holocaust. She lived an awful life. Somebody presented her with the gospel and she rejected it. Is she in hell right now? Whoa. I said, Eddie, I don't know where your mother is. I don't know if she made a profession of faith in her last moments. But if she didn't, then God will not force her into his presence against her will. God is too loving for that. And I asked the audience this question. In fact, I'll ask you as an audience this question. Ladies, is there anybody in here who's ever had a man pursue you and you did not want that man to pursue you? You did not want to date him. Anyone in here? Of course. In fact, some of you are going, yeah, he's sitting right next to me right now. He won't leave me alone. <laughs> 
I said, okay, ladies, suppose this man continues to pursue you and continues to pursue you. And you say, look, I only like you as a friend. Ladies, why don't you just take the knife, stick it in, and turn it? Because every man in here has heard this. I like you, but only as a friend. Well, suppose he continues to pursue you, continues to pursue you. And he gets to the point where he says, look, I love you so much, I'm going to force you to love me. Can he do that? No, he can't do that. Mm -hmm. Love, by definition, must be freely given. So if he truly did love you, what would he do? He would leave you alone. That's exactly what God does. He keeps sending us cards, letters, and flowers while we're here. And if we keep rejecting him, keep rejecting him, he gives us up to our own desires. And that ultimately what hell is ultimately what hell is. Hell is separation from God. Do we really believe that the gospel is our greatest need? Do we really believe that it's the church's greatest need? Do we really believe that it is our nation's greatest need? Do we really believe that it is our world's greatest need? Do we really believe that? Or are we waiting for someone to ride in on a white horse who's not named Jesus? If we believe this, we will manifest that belief by preaching this gospel in which we have confidence. Praise the Lord. This is so beautiful. I really love how uh, uh, Frank Turek uh, really laid it down uh, in terms of the relationship, but that someone can look for ways and loopholes to, you know, label God all kinds of names versus someone really saying like what Vody uh, Vod Barkham said. Really, do we believe that the gospel gives us hope? Listen to what the word of God says. I like this in the book of Mark chapter 1 verse 15. And the time is fulfilled. The kingdom of God is at hand. Repent and believe the gospel. God is providing this gospel message jesus christ is the way this there's no other there's no hope our salvation outside of jesus repent and believe the gospel uh also in mark chapter 16 verse 16 he he says uh, he who believes and is baptized will be saved but he who does not believe will be condemned this is the message this is the gospel that bishop baron should be preaching to ben, ben shapiro pleading with him to please there's no time to really hear the gospel message believe that you might be saved this is the same message uh, i believe pope francis should should be preaching to the boy and every other person believe the gospel let's not give people false hope or let them know that there is salvation in Jesus Christ. But also, lastly, I like this, Acts chapter 16, verse 30 and 31, and he brought them out and says, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? How do I get saved? And, he, and, and they said, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and you will be saved, and you and your household believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and you will be saved. This is the gospel message. This is the hope that we have believed. When you look at the world we live in, it's so full of darkness, it's so full of death, it's so full of evil, and we know that only only Christ can give hope in the midst of calamities, in the midst of turmoil. Only Christ, when you have him, even in the midst of all of this, you have joy that will help you go through the trials of life. But ultimately, we know that this is no way it ends that we have a home in heaven. That is the message that we should preach. That's the message I present to you. Please turn from your wicked ways and believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and you will be saved. That's a gospel message. That's a message that gives hope. Anything other than that, you're going to keep laws, you're going to follow the commandment. You're going to keep stumbling because you cannot perfectly keep him. Only Jesus could do that. He did that for you and I. Why not receive him if you don't know him? God bless you. Let me know what you think in the comment section. Please like this video, subscribe if you're new, and by the grace of God, I will catch you on the next one.